ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم فقال تعالى في القران الكريم اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون وقال ايضا اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارham ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا وقال ايضا اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الحدي حدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور مخدساتها وكل مخدثه في البدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار اما بعد verily all praises are for allah subhanahu wa ta'ala our master our cherisher our sustainer lord of all the worlds to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we turn to in all our affairs be it in a fear of sadness or in a fear of happiness for allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the only disposer of our of affairs and we turn to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with full conviction in our hearts we beg and we ask allah subhanahu wa to increase us in tawakkul to increase us in hidayah to increase us in 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 patience we ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to increase us in all the qualities that will make us people who become vessels for this beautiful deen of al islam my beloved brothers and sisters today this beautiful day of the eid of the week especially as we usher in a new year a new islamic year of 1442 after hijra and alhamdulillah this after hijra when we write the date ah after hijra uh, we also reflect on something the beginning of the new islamic year is it begins from muharram muharram we have dhul hijja dhul qada dhul hijja dhul qada we have muharram and so we are coming out of a season of hajj and we going into the new year so dhul hijj dhul qada dhul hijja muharram this is the progression and the, these three months we know are they are sacred and the month of rajab these months are sacred in the sight of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and how do we get this how where did we get this information from from habibuna rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam so we send choices we ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to send choices blessings on rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam who has brought us this beautiful message from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through angel jibreel alayhi salatu wassalam and rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam explained and gave us the methodology and the, how to apply this beautiful prescription from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so we state with full conviction in our hearts that rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam is our beloved is our beloved our nabi we're happy raditu billahi rabba we're happy to have allah as our lord wa bi muhammad sallallahu alaihi wa nabiyan wa rasul that rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam is our nabi is our prophet or messenger that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent for the guidance of all humanity alhamdulillah wa shukru lillah alhamdulillah wa shukru lillah my beloved brothers and sisters today our reflection as you will hear beautiful uh, khutbas on uh, muharram is beautiful virtues and why not it's a beautiful time a beautiful month a sacred month that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shahrul this is the month of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allah subhanahu wa join his name with this month so this beautiful month has significant uh, virtues for us 
a yet another opportunity for us to take advantage over. So alhamdulillah wa shukrillah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who brought us out of the season of hajj. Cleanse us, the people who made hajj. Uh, lots of people didn't make this year, but alhamdulillah. Uh, may Allah reward all those with beautiful intentions. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us a cleansing through hajj and umrah. And now gave us this month of Muharram. A month where we're now uh, uh, beginning a new year. My beloved brothers and sisters, uh, we know the story and how we, how we become to mark this month to be the new year. Umar, Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu ta'ala, and as you all know that he, when they had this uh, shura deciding on uh, the Islamic uh, how to begin, uh, some of the companions uh, recommended we start from Ramadan, beautiful holy month, a beautiful holy month. And eventually it was decided, Umar ibn al-Khattab says, we will start this month, the, 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 is the, the new counting of the new year from, uh, from, from, uh, from the migration. The migration of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the month of Muharram. And why the month of Muharram? Because this is the month also of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah joined his name. So before the advent of the institution of fasting, uh, we know that tenth of Muharram used to be what used to be the 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 obligatory fast. Everyone used to fast on the tenth of Muharram. This is before the, the 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 institution of Ramadan came, and so everyone used to fast in this in this uh, time. Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam he saw the Jews fasting, and he says uh, he asked them why you fast on the day. They said this is the day Allah subhanahu wa taala saved Musa. Uh, delivered Musa and saved the children of Israel. So Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi says, we are more deserving to Musa. Because Musa is our prophet. Also, Musa is our, uh, uh, we are the closest following of Musa Alayhi Salatu Wasalam in, 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 in terms of Tawheed. We are we're, we're closer to Musa Alayhi Salatu Wasalam. So Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasalam says, we are fasting on this, made it uh, uh, for us to fast on this day as well. And then Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi says, if I live next year, I'm going to join another day with it. Because of course, we, our actions are, are, are singled out or uh, our actions are done not to mirror other nations. But if, uh, Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi did not live to see the next year. And so, but he, he, his, uh, his command is with us. So Alhamdulillah, you will hear beautiful khutbas on the on on the the virtues of Muharram and so on and so forth as uh, as we as we uh, proceed into this month. But know that the the beginning of our calendar began with this migration from Mecca to Medina, and so our reflection, inshaAllah, will be uh, uh, on on the migration. Because it is what began the calendar. It is where we began the calendar. This event is what began our calendar. Used to, to used to as a, as a, as a demarcation, uh, inshallah. So, Bismillah. Let us begin on this journey of, of, of how Rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam came from Mecca to Medina. First, to begin with, we know uh, about five kilometers, maybe from Mecca, there is this cave Athaur. Many people who went there, they've seen how high uh, th this cave is. And this is where uh, 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 Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sought refuge. He sought refuge uh, in this cave with his trusted companion and friend, Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala an. And this cave, the cave, this cave occupy a very important place in the history of Islam. One, uh, we know, we know the cave, uh, we know the cave of Hira. This also is another cave where uh, Iqra bismi rabbika alladhi khalaq. This beautiful uh, ayah uh, came down to Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that began the process of revelation. This, but this cave tower is, is, is another cave about five kilometers from Mecca and this is where they sought refuge. We know the beautiful stories of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Abu Bakr al-Siddiq ta'ala and he, uh, Rasul sallallahu was taking a rest. He rested his head on his lap, and uh, and, and there were holes where um, where snakes and all of this live. Uh, before they went in into the cave, Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala, and he made sure that all of that is cleared. So when he went in there, Rasul sallallahu alaihi was sleeping on on his uh, on his lap, had his head on his lap, and then uh, 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 he put his foot to block one of the hole. Uh, he put his foot to block one of the hole. 
And uh, it so happened a snake was there. And the snake was biting uh, uh, Abu Bakr Siddiq. And then out of pain, his tears starts to fall and dripped on the face of Rasul and he woke up. See, he said, Bakr, why didn't you uh, wake me up? He didn't want to disturb Rasul Look how beautiful this is. And Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam took his saliva, put it on that place, and uh, Abu Bakr said the effects of the, of the poison of the snake immediately went away. So this is a beautiful uh, 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 personal uh, experience of Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala and that he had with Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa So when they left, tracking parties were set up and you know how they left. Uh, uh, Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa uh, when he left, uh, the, 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 the people, the, the, they were planning to kill Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa And so Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Ali ibn Abi Talib, he slept in his bed. And then in the morning when they came, Rasul Sallam left and he recited verses of Surah Yasin and, 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 and throw it in the dust, throw it at, at the guards and they couldn't. They fell asleep. And, and uh, when they wake up and when they go now, they go to the room, they saw when they pulled the sheet, they, they were all members of the tribes were around because no one wants to be uh, uh, held responsible for killing Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So it was a collective uh, duty. So they all stand here with their spears, pull it, and when they saw it, they saw it, it was Ali ibn Abi Talib. So Ali ibn Abi Talib, subhanAllah, he, he singled out as well in many, many things, but this is one of them. He put his life down there to be in the place of Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So let's move on. So now tracking parties uh, uh, were sent out, uh, out of... Um, out of uh, Mecca to search for Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and Abi Bakr Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala. The price of the camels, the price was about 10 camels. When all clear, they set out for Medina. So Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they were also making sure when they were in this cave that, that no one is around and so on and so forth. And they used as well, uh, they, they, they used unfamiliar path. So let's pay attention because uh, when we set out to do things, especially like this type of of, 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 of uh, of, uh, of journey, Rasul Sam did not take the regular path, he chose an unfamiliar path. And we'll come back to this. This is how Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, it tells you that he planned, he planned whenever he undertakes something, he, he, he made sure he, he think about it sensibly. And this is one of the lessons for you and I, that we, whenever we, pl we do something, plan it out. Don't just go crazy, just, just sit, make some plan and say, this is how I'm going to tackle it. Bismillah, and then you go. So this happened, uh, uh, the remainder of the journey, as we know, it was, um, it, it was fairly safe uh, and, and many things, uh, incident happened, but we'll fast forward a little bit. So the people of, of, uh, of Medina were anxiously waiting to see Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The children would come out one day, they didn't see him go back. People go come out, they didn't see him go back. And then eventually they spot Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam coming. And the children, they all began uh, to sing uh, the famous Tala uh, al-Badru alayna, this beautiful anashid uh, the, that so much variations now exist, alhamdulillah. This is one of the, the happy, the happy times because it was, it was indicative of, of what Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he was, he was the full moon and he was coming to Medina. He was coming he was coming to Medina. So this was in honor of Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So this, uh, of course, we know that they made a stop uh, and, and Majid Kuba and, uh, and, and that mosque was built. And then Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam proceeded uh, into Medina. And of course, everyone wanted to, to host Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, but he allowed uh, his camel uh, to, 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 uh, to, 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 to gently walk and wherever the camel stopped, that is where Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam be, uh, made, his, um, made his, uh, his place of abode. Uh, uh, the camel stopped, as we know, uh, a site belonging to two orphans of Banu Najjar, the clan of Banu Najjar, to which belong uh, Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's mother. The mother of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam belonged to this clan. And, and the nearest house was that of the beautiful companion Abu, uh, Abu Ayyub, Al-Ansari radiallahu ta'ala and uh, so he was the fortunate man to be the host of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam so one of the most important things that Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa did in Medina was to ask the people of Medina to help those who came from Mecca uh, the people who migrated 
he asked the beautiful people of Medina to help them. And the people of Medina, what did they do? They shared their homes. They opened their homes and goods, whatever they have in, in excess, they give with the people of, of Mecca. Uh, they didn't think about it. Most readily, they, 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 they helped the people who came on this migration. They helped the people who migrated uh, from, from Mecca. So these people, these beautiful people of Medina, they're called Ansars. The beautiful people, the Ansar. And that's why today people, when they go into the, mar the market, the shops, and they try to buy something, yeah, Ansar. They, they remind them of this generous uh, time that they showed with Rasul Sallallahu and his companions from Mecca. And, and people usually soften up a bit, alhamdulillah. So this is uh, uh, the, 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 the Ansars. And then we have the Muhajireen, those who uh, made the, the migration. So one of the most important things that Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam uh, is this philosophy of muakha, this, uh, this brotherhood. To, this is one of the, 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 the major things that Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam uh, made between these two, between the, the people of the Ansars and the Muhajirin. Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam instituted brotherhood between them. Uh, and that's why, you know, we also have another hadith of Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, give gifts because this also um, brings people together. Give salam. This also has, um, you give the, the, the greetings of peace. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This also makes people hearts come together. So you give gifts, it naturally brings people together. You give the salam, it brings people together. This is one of the unique, unique features of the Muslim. Whenever the Muslims reach, First thing you hear is to say, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Beautiful ada, beautiful mannerism Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi left with us. But not only it's a mechanical thing, not only it's a verbal thing, it also creates a feelings in the heart between the two people who exchange salam. And so, Mu'akha, this, this uh, Islamic brotherhood, it is a philosophy in which Islam unites people of different race, of different color, of different backgrounds, of different social status into one single family and declare them to be brothers and sisters of each other. That is why when you find today something happening in a different part of the world to your Muslim brothers and sisters, what do we do? Ya Allah, and we remember them, we pray for them, we beg for them. This, this concept of Islamic brotherhood was, was cemented when Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam came uh, through the beautiful examples of the Ansar, the Muhajirin, and the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam caused up, uh, us to be on this path. Alhamdulillah wa shukrillah. Secondly, we want to pause on the way of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. We want to ponder on the way that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala caused the mission of Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to be split into two parts. We have what is known, this later became uh, the foundation of the different aspects of the Sharia as well. So by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala causing this, uh, this, this, the, these two periods, the, the Makkah period and the Madani period, it also became a foundation uh, where uh, uh, laws are, are derived, uh, uh, different, uh, different aspects of the Sharia. It, it, it's, uh, it's, it's, if you want to say classified or, it's, or it falls into these uh, two groupings of surahs. So let's take a, um, a quick look at, 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 at this, inshallah. So they have distinct characteristics, and uh, distinct characteristics are prevalent from these two periods, from the from the uh, from the Makkah period and and from the Madani period. With regards to how the, the Holy Quran uh, is is characterized, so number one, from so the, let's take a look at the Mac, Mecca characteristics. Number one. Any chapter that has a verse that commands to prostrate to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Makki. And if you think about it, 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 makes, it makes sense. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is now speaking of Tawheed. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, is moving the people from darkness and, and declaring Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as their Lord. So this is the chapters that are mostly for uh, prostrating and commands to prostrate to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are considered Makki chapters. Except the chapters uh, Surah ar rad uh, uh, Surah al rad uh, chapter 13 of the Holy Quran uh, and Surah Al-Hajj also chapter 22 uh, and so any chapter that contains the word Kalla never is also considered Mecca and are found only in the second half of the Holy Quran 
any chapter that has that's the phrase ya ayyuhannas o mankind but does not have the phrase ya ayyuhalladhina amanu o you who believe is also maki except we know surah al hajj and all chapters that start with the initial letters are considered maki as well except uh, chapters like uh, surah baqarah al imran and surah ar rad uh, chapter 2 uh, chapter 3 chapter 13 and any chapter that declares the story of Adam and Iblis is Maki, except we know uh, uh, Surah Baqarah. Uh, and any chapter that relates the stories of the previous prophets and their people are also Maki, except again, you know, what is conveyed in Surah Al-Baqarah. Uh, uh, short verses and strong, uh, short verses and strong uh, rhetorical uh, style and rhythmic sound. These are all uh, uh, considered Maki type um, or characteristics of Maki type uh, uh, verses. Repeated use of emphasis, exhortation, analogies, and oath, they are mostly found in the period of the Meccan period. An emphasis in the belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, solidifying the, 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 the Tawheed uh, and believing in the Day of Judgment. These are our fundamental and core concepts were conveyed during uh, the Meccan period. And description of heaven and hell, things that we should believe in, right? These are all things that we should, uh, that were uh, revealed or, or characteristic, char 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 uh, they're all characteristics of the verses that are revealed in the, in the, in the Meccan period. And then there was, as you know, the time people were bur burying their girl children alive, idol worshipping, so on and so forth. So call to good character, call to adherence to good morals and universal characters like truthfulness, kindness, kindness to relatives, to elderly, to neighbors. All of these are from that period. Uh, argument, argument with the polytheists and refutation of, of their associating partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All of these are from the Makki period and warning the polytheists through the stories of the previ previous um, Anbiya uh, when punishment came to their people. All of these are characterized as, as Makki type uh, verses. So when, when, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent the, the Anbiya to, to, to the people, uh, these were recounted back to, 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 the, to, to the people who were who are, uh, the Makkis, uh, the, the Makkans at that time, Rasulullah was recounting the stories. These stories were recounted and the punishment that those people feared because they didn't listen to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They disobeyed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, how does the Madani verses the, the, compare to this period? Uh, number one, the mention of jihad and detailing of its rulings. So you have to understand that now Rasulullah moved from an oppressive state to a state that embraced him. A state, uh, now there's the, the Islamic state is going to be formed. Uh, the people were accepting, the people uh, wanted Rasulullah Sallam, they invited Rasulullah Sallam to come, and, and now Rasulullah Sallam is with his companions, and the Ansar, Muhajir, the Ummah now is becoming the brotherhood. This brotherhood is established, and now there are rules, other rules now that uh, would enhance the state starts to come. Rules of Jihad and detailing of the rules, uh, details of Islamic jurisprudence and legal system, as well as the laws governing family, uh, money transactions, right? Because now, now they will have trade, money transactions, international law. Rasulullah sent treaties, made treaties, and sent invitation to other, to other, uh, to other uh, states and to other uh, peoples, right? So all of this became uh, how Rasulullah should interact. All of this became law international law, acts of worship, these things start to take form, they start to, uh, to be solidified. Uh, and this is when, you know, like, like that is why Muharram, the 10th of Muharram, we said previous to all of this, Muharram was the day of fasting. That was the obligatory fast. Everyone fasted. But now Ramadan is going to come. The, 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 the obligation of Ramadan became, and then Muharram became, it, it didn't become uh, obligatory after that. Uh, and so mention of hypocrisy and dealing with the hypocrites because now uh, Rasulullah had to deal with that. How Rasulullah uh, in, in that society, people, they say they believe and they actually do not believe or they make a treaty and they break the treaty. So how does Rasulullah deal with these people? The verses of, of, of all of this began to come in this now uh, 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 developing state. And long verses, easy, easy, uh, easy vocabulary, verses that start with, Ya ayyuhalladhina amanu, O you who believe, because now people's hearts are, are fully entrenched into the deen. The, 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 the framework is there now. 
arguments with the people of the book, the Jews and the Christians. These things start starts to uh, to. Be. So if you were to look at it a total uh, from a from a, a pure analytical perspective. We find maybe about 20, let's if you want for easy calculation, 25% of the Quran is, is Madani and the 75% because there are uh, you know, long chapters and big chapters, there are, are Maki chapters. So that's give you a context. So this is how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also, this is what, how the migration, right, from Mecca to Medina and the events that unfolded in Medina, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, revealed verses to suit that. And that is something we should ponder on because Muharram is a beautiful sacred month. But this 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 uh, momentous event took place, the Hijra. So Hijra was one of the most important events in the history of Islam, and it is the uh, for this reason that Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu ta'ala he adopted the Hijra date uh, to, to 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 begin from this from this as a focal point, and we start to uh, to to reckon uh, our. Um, our uh, our our time our our Islamic uh, calendar from this time. So in physical terms, the Hijra was a journey between two cities, from Mecca to Medina, and it's about 210 200 and, uh, uh, miles apart, maybe um, 200 a uh, little over. But in a grand significance, it marked the beginning of an era, a civilization. It marked the beginning of a, a, a new era, a new civilization, um, uh, a new culture, uh, and, and, and our history, a more formidable history um, uh, with, with regards to social interactions, with regards to the formulation of a state. All of this became mature when the Rasulullah made this journey. And not only for the Muslims, it became a model. Remember, Medina became a model for the entire world until today. You know, we say once we divert from the, the Madani model, we find, you know, people, uh, we find we lose it, right? We find when we move away, and, and this is in the context of move away from, the, from, from Allah and His, and, and His Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa from the Quran and the Sunnah of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So my beloved brothers and sisters, this is uh, some of the things, uh, of, as we know, Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa he built a mosque. When he migrated, he built a mosque. You and I are immigrants. We came from different places. What we did we do when we come here? Our parents and our elders, they build mosques. So this is, in the, this is the sunnah for when we migrate, right? We build masjids uh, for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they set up an Islamic school, a madrasa, an Islamic institution. The first school under the supervision of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was the school of where? as sufa when you go to Medina now, you see this raised platform, but it's not exactly there. It was uh, uh, almost uh, side by side, but it, it moved over time. And but but that's the school of Rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam. There's so much companions that were there. Yes, they were they were poor companions, but they were also hungry. Abu Huraira radiallahu taala an. We got so much hadith from Abu Huraira radiallahu taala an because what? Because he was in the school of Rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So Rasul sallam made mosque. Rasulullah established madrasa, um, and, and, and Rasulullah established, as we said previously, uh, uh, the, the, the muakha, the brotherhood, the brotherhood, and then Rasulullah embarked on cleaning the city. Look at this, embarked on cleaning the city before it was Yatrib, right? That was the previous name of Medina. It was a dirty city. When the Rasulullah migrated, when the companions, when they came from Mecca. To, to, to Medina, many of them got ill. Many of them, they, 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 they couldn't handle the city. The city, apart from the weather, the, the weather was, you know, erratic. Uh, the city was also dirty. So a lot of the, the, the companions of Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they became ill. Uh, Rasul Sallallahu then asked them to clean the city and remove all this dirt and the filth and, and, and have things, you know, in its proper place. Uh, garbage, uh, garbage uh, uh, place is, is one is one corner, and, and people must be now take their garbage there as opposed to just dropping it all over. And this is what we see today. You see a civilized community in a civilized society. Think Rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam. This is what he instituted when he moved from Mecca to Medina. Um, Aisha radiallahu taala anha. She said, "We came to Medina, and it was the most polluted land of Allah subhanahu wa taala." The water there was most stinking. And so all of this changed. 
So Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the water system in, in the city, Rasul Sallam asked the companions to dig wells in different parts of the city. It is mentioned that more than 50 wells were open in the city, the city of Medina, and there was enough clean water for everyone. So when you have irrigation, when you have wells, when you have water, you clean the city, you establish brotherhood, right? All of this now, right? You have this mutual love and feeling between people. Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam encouraged agriculture and gardening. Subhanallah. Water is available, irrigation, water, and uh, gardening, and agriculture. Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told the people, he said, whoever cultivated, uh, cultivates a barren land, uh, that land becomes yours. So people started to cultivate the land. And then there was so much produce that people, that Medina became everyone. There was no more poor people. Everyone became, uh, became uh, satisfied with, and, and there were so much crops and no need. And then so much so that when, when, when parties come to Medina, Medina had so much to give. Right? So this is one of the things. We, this is self-sufficiency. Rasulullah taught self-sufficiency. Today what happens? Today our food comes from a different country, from a, from a different state, has to be refrigerated, has to come a week, have, uh, the bananas come here and, and, and they, they're put in a room and then they, 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 they release gas on them and then they, they ripen. What is this type of uh, existence? We have to go back to, the, to being self-sufficient. Plant our little garden. Right, if when we can, yes, the weather is thing, but do it when you when you can, right? This is part of the Sunnah of Rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and so agriculture became uh, became a, a big uh, industry, if you want to call it that, in Medina, and then uh, 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 poverty uh, was eradicated through all of these uh, measures, safety and security, law and order, because now there are rules, the laws of Allah subhanahu wa taala came. And, and how to deal with people, all of this, all of this came into existence in Medina. And so the place become uh, uh, um, a place of safety and security. Imagine this wonderful city that was, that was once dirty, now is flourishing with flowers, flourishing with agriculture, flourishing with, with just being clean, flourishing with having proper water source. source. All of this became part of Medina. And so my beloved brothers and sisters, Rasulullah also was very respectful to the people there. He, he, he established inter-community and interfaith relations, right? Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi also established good relations with the community living in Medina. As we know, there was a large Jewish community there, uh, as well as some other Arab tribes who had not accepted Islam. Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi prepared a covenant, a covenant, a, 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 an agreement, a memorandum of understanding between the Muslims uh, for relations between these community, the Muslim community and these other communities. My beloved brothers and sisters, in short, the Hijra teaches us that wherever Muslim go, they should bring goodness to that land. Wherever Muslim go, they should bring goodness to that land. Wherever Muslim go, they should work to uplift the moral standards of that land. Wherever Muslims go, they must not only focus on material goodness, but if, if they're blessed, they must not only think selfishly, but raise the community as well. And that is why we, when we give back to our community, I'm not saying give back to the masajid. This is basic. We know we have to do things like that. I'm saying, when last have we reached out to the neighbor who's not Muslim? When last have we been part of the soup kitchen, right? that is not run by a masjid or, or a Muslim? When last have we gone to volunteer? How are we teaching our kids? This is the, the, the model of Medina. It taught us this. So we as immigrants, we as migrants coming here, just as the companions migrated from Mecca to Medina, this is the model we you and I, we have to be part of. It is, it is an obligation for us to take the lesson and reflect on this in this beautiful month of Muharram. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, make it easy for you and I to take these lessons, to make sure that we are, uh, we are inculcating all of these lessons into our daily life, uh, especially as we reflect on this beautiful month of Muharram. 
there are sacred things that uh, inshallah we will cover as we get closer or maybe another khatib inshallah maybe uh, next week but uh, we must also uh, understand that there there's a lot of misconceptions you know it is a time of karbala the time uh, uh, of imam hussein uh, uh, and also know that uh, this is just a coincidence to happen on 10th of uh, of Muharram, it, uh, it is not because of Karbala we celebrate tenth of Mu of Muharram Ashura. The, those two things are not connected, right? So let's make sure that we understand that um, there are other cultures. People cook special food. People mourn this entire month. This is not our way. This is not the way that Rasulullah taught us. Uh, we, so we should stay away from things that uh, that uh, has crept in. In, 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 into our deen inshallah uh, people do not get married in this month because they think it's a sad month they, these are not uh, practices that we subscribe to inshallah we pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may cause us to make a beautiful uh, resolution uh, setting uh, a, a priority straight uh, reflecting back on the, the basics right we reflect back on putting our tawakkul, begging Allah for hidayah, for guidance, uh, working towards the model, the Madani model, the model that was the most successful uh, model uh, in, 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 you know, in history of mankind. This, this beautiful brotherhood, it wasn't me, 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 me. Right when people when 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 the when 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 the when the city has surplus, it distributed not only to Muslims, not only to Muslims. It gave to emissaries to people to people who came as well who came uh, uh, to visit Medina. They were lavished with with, with 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 from from the product of Medina. This is the way of the Muslims. We have to be a solution to what is going on today. Yes, we have so much trials that are happening. But we also have to do our part. We still have to be, be doing social distancing. It's not over. Let's, let's do our part. Let's protect ourselves and protect others uh, mostly. And, 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 and be people who continue to make a difference in our communities, in our society. Remember our brothers and sisters all over the world. You know, we have COVID. They have COVID plus they have oppression and poverty and so many other things. Before COVID. So imagine what they're going through. Right? We only have COVID now. Uh, perhaps we just have one little thing um, and, and we're complaining so much. So beg Allah, beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for our brothers and sisters all over the world. You know, wake up for tahajjud. Make sure we build our, our bank in the akhirah as well. Uh, try to do good as much as you can. Recite the morning athqar. Re, re, be re, uh, uh, vigilant in reciting the Holy Quran. All of us are lacking. We need to, we, we need to pick up the slack and, 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 and go forward inshallah. As this new year comes, this should be part of our resolution. Uh, as Muslims, our resolution should be that we use this new year. We beg Allah, Ya Allah, bless us with safety and security and keep us away from the shaitan. Ya Hayu Ya Qayyum, but make us people who strive to come closer to you. Ya Hayu Ya Qayyum, and to the love of Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. May Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala bless all of you, all of us, uh, alleviate the suffering of the Ummah, especially, and all of humanity. May Allah protect us from COVID and all other diseases that are out there and all diseases, disasters, calamities, catastrophes. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cause us to be better people every single day. Ya hayu ya qayyum, ya hayu ya qayyum, ya hayu ya qayyum. May Allah uh, grant us all the ability to, uh, to be better people and to set better example for others out there. ربنا أتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وكن أضاب النار وارخلنا الجنة مع الأبرار يا أزيز يا غفار يا رب العالمين اللهم أرنا الحق حقا ورزقنا تباعا وأرنا الباطل باطلا ورزقنا اجتنابا ربنا هب لنا من أزواجنا وذرياتنا كرة عيون وجعلنا للمتقين إماما ربنا أتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وكن أضاب النار وارخلنا الجنة مع الأبرار يا أزيز يا غفار يا رب العالمين well, we beg of you for all people, Ya Hayu Ya Qayyum, all of humanity, Ya Allah, continue to protect us and lift this bala from us, Ya Hayu Ya Qayyum. We beg of you, Ya Allah, help us to make change to ourselves and to come close to you and to the love of Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and following of Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Please make it easy for us, Ya Hayu Ya Qayyum. Well, Allah, help us, Ya Adal Jalali Wal Ikram, and protect our children and their and our families and our siblings and the entire ummah of Rasul Sallallahu Our neighbors, Ya Hayu Ya Qayyum, protect all our neighbors, Ya Hayu Ya Qayyum, Ya Hayu Ya Qayyum, Ya Hayu. And our brothers and sisters all over the world who are suffering, Ya, we beg of you for them. Ya Dhal Jalali Wal Kram, Ya Dhal Jalali Wal Kram, Ya Dhal Jalali Wal Kram. 
يا حي يا كم يا ربي بالمصطفى بلغ ما قاصدنا واغفر لنا ما مضى يا واسع الكرمين سبحان ربك رب العزة ما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين My dear brothers and sisters uh, I leave this uh, reminder with uh, with myself and, and all of us inshallah and we pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless all of us have a wonderful weekend and uh, inshallah may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us for our shortcomings and errors wassalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh